Hello again, guys. Welcome back. Exalt thy horn. I am thankful and glad that you guys could tune in again today. Um, I was gone for a couple weeks on a uh, work trip, and um, I had a, I really did have a great time, guys. Uh, I got to meet a lot of people. I've seen so many people, and uh, you know I wasn't feeling the greatest. I went down and I was diagnosed just like a couple days before I went down with COVID. And um, my throat was, there was a time when I had the COVID that I couldn't even speak. Um, I, it affected my throat so much, more than anything else. It was weird. Um, but God's hands of grace and mercy have touched me. And um, I am feeling a lot better from that. Uh, just continue to pray for one another, guys. There's so many sicknesses going around. I got to talk to so many people. So much sickness going around, guys. As we know that these things are prophesied to happen. Wars and rumors of wars. Continue to pray for those things. Uh, continue to pray for the body of Christ. That they stay strong through affliction and persecution. And um, let's just pray for one another. That the word of God will go through. And it will go abound. Everywhere and into all lands and nations and kingdoms. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Um, so today... I do want to share a message with you guys today. It's in, uh, we're actually going to go to the throne of God. If you will, turn with me to Isaiah, the sixth chapter. Isaiah, the sixth chapter. And uh, as I was on a work trip, I was uh, studying and uh, seeking the Lord. And God had really opened this message up to me. And it's just not for me. It's for all of us that become little children that and that um, are new creatures in Christ that desire the pure milk of the Word. Hallelujah to the Lamb. That are wanting to grow in grace and in knowledge. That don't want to be walking with the grace of God in vain or walking in a lie anymore. That want to be a part of the truth. Want to be a part of the body of Christ. Want to be a part of eternal life. Amen. So God had really opened this up to me. Isaiah chapter 6. It says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whore that is full of his glory. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. And in verse 5, then said I, Woe is me. Hold on. Hold on here. Take heed. Take heed. Woe is me. Judgment. Condemnation is me. It was you and I too. For I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. The coal was on the altar, and he'd taken it with the tongs. Verse 7, and he laid it upon my mouth. My mouth. And said, Lo! Behold, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's what happens at the throne of God. For Isaiah had realized that he was a man of unclean lips. First thing we must do is realize, for all have sinned. And then God will send forth that live coal to touch your mouth. He'll purge your sin. He'll take your sin, your iniquity away. You won't be living in the grace of God in vain, but you'll be living by grace through faith. It's the power of God. The Bible says where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Verse 8, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Here's the key of the message, guys. After his sin has been purged, his iniquity is taken away. 
The, the, the coal that touched his lips. The word of God has touched his mouth and has burned it. My God is a consuming fire, it says in the book of Hebrews. He consumes the sin out of our life by his word. Glory to God. Oh, how I love him so. Whom shall I send, he says in verse 8, and who will go for us? Then said I, here am I. Send me. Is that, is that you plea? You've been purged, you've been cleansed. Send me. I think of Peter when he tells Peter, Peter, do you love me? Then go and feed my sheep. He says it three times in the book of John, the last chapter. And he said, go and tell this people, verse 9, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their eyes heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. We must hear the word of God. Hearing the word of God produces faith. We must walk by faith and not by sight. We must crucify the flesh with all of its passions, lusts, and desires. When your iniquity is purged and cleansed, don't be like the dog that goes back to its own vomit. You've been baptized into Christ. Romans 6, 1 said, we that are dead in Christ are now alive in Christ. Well, let me just say it. Where sin abounds, grace abounds more. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that died to sin? Was his sin purged and taken away? He died from sin. If your sin's been taken away, you died from sin. How shall we that died to sin live any longer in it? But go and live in the grace of God. That's why it says where sin abounds, grace abounds more. Because sin abounded, he had unclean lips. But it wasn't for him to be baptized into Christ and be like the dog that goes back to his own vomit after he receives the grace of God. But when you receive the grace of God, walk in the grace of God all the days of your life. Take heed, guys. Don't listen to those false teachers and preachers that tell you you can never do this. You can't stop sinning all the days of your life. Oh, you can receive grace as the woman that committed adultery. She had received grace. Her condemners were gone. But Jesus had left her with a word. To go now and sin no more. Don't run back to your sin. Don't run back to your harlotry. Don't run back to the adultery that you had committed. But now you've received grace. You've been cleansed. And just like Isaiah was, this woman, this woman that was a harlot that had committed adultery, guess what? Her sins were cleansed and purged. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Oh, glory to God. Turn to Jeremiah, guys. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 1. Glory to God. Chapter 1 verse 9. The same message. Remember that the word had touched what touches mouth. That coal, that fire. God's word is a consuming fire. It's the same thing. Look at Jeremiah 1 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. This is another prophet. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. So to destroy it, to pull it down, to root it up, but to build new. To take the corruptible seed, what it talks about in 1 Peter. Take that corruptible seed, throw that away. Destroy that seed. That seed was destroyed. The old man died. When he heard the word of God, the word of God came into the old man's life and he died. He opened his heart up and he received the grace of God. And he now sits in that mercy seat, doing the will of the Father. Not going back to his sin, remembering Lot's wife, putting his hand to the plow and not looking back, walking in a foundation that's built upon Christ and building on that foundation and finishing the house. You must finish the house. Apply all those things to it. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Put application to your faith. For without works, or faith without works, guys, is dead. How can you that build a house not count the cost and see if you can finish the house or not? But you count the cost before you lay the foundation to see if you have enough to build the entire house. 
you have enough, for he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Glory to God. Verse 11, Moreover the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? I said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. Glory to God. And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, What seest thou? I said, I see a seeding pot, and the face thereof is toward the north. And God goes on to tell him about all those kingdoms. And look what he says. Jump to verse 16. And I will utter my judgments against them. He's talking about who? Israel, guys. He's pleading for faithfulness in Israel. And he's sending a prophet to tell them to take heed to the words that God has put in the prophet's mouth. For it is not I that speak, but it is the Holy Spirit that speaks through me. That's what he's saying right here to Jeremiah. Look what he says. I will utter my judgments against them touching all their wickedness who have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods and worship the works of their own hands. Thou, therefore, gird up thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. Don't be afraid of them. For if you're afraid of them, I will consume you right before them. For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city. This is why you don't have to be afraid. God is wanting somebody. What did Isaiah say? Send me. After he's been cleansed, after his sin has been purged, after he's received the grace of God, send me, O oh God. God is looking for somebody that has a heart for him. Like David. David went and he said, I will take this uncircumcised Philistine's head today that defiles the Lord's house. Nobody defiles God's army. Hallelujah. Same Thing right here in the book of Isaiah. Send me, O oh Lord. Send me, no matter how weak it looks. Send me, for in my weakness is the Lord's strength. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Glory to God. Let that be your cry. For God is looking for somebody in these last days, anybody, to send to the people to tell them to depart from their iniquity, to depart from their sin. For all that name the name of Christ, 2 Timothy, depart from iniquity. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You must depart from your sins. You must receive the grace of God and walk in it all the days of your life. Glory to God. Take heed. Don't listen to those cancers out there. They're cankers. They will destroy your soul. They'll fill you up with nothing but poison, guys. Get away from them. Pour your heart out for the Lord. Depart from iniquity. Walk in grace. Walk in faithfulness unto Christ Jesus. Don't be a harlot, but be... be be the bride. The bridegroom's looking for a faithful and holy bride that's been cleansed, that's been purged, that's walking by grace through faith, a working love. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ah. For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city, verse 18, and an iron pillar and bracing walls against the whole land against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. Oh, what power God had put in the prophet Jeremiah. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. If God be for us, who can be against us? God is looking for somebody that says, just like Isaiah, send me. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. Don't look upon your youth. I'm a 34-year-old kid. Don't look upon the youth. No matter who it is or what you've done, God can put His Spirit in you and He can use you to fulfill prophecy and to fulfill His Word if you're willing. The leper in Matthew 8 was willing. He was a leper, but he was cleansed when he heard the Word of God. And Jesus had healed him. And I can assure you, by faith you can move any mountain. Don't do it upon your own fleshly lusts. Do it for the kingdom of God. Do it for his will. Do it for his kingdom come and his will be done. Do it because you love him because he first loved you. Oh, the foundation of love as Christ is love. He's the image of God. And First John says, God is love. Build your house upon that foundation. And when the storm comes, there's a shaking coming that speaks about in the book of Hebrews. God is going to shake the heavens and the earth. 
And when that happens, that storm will not tear your house down. For it was founded upon the rock, and that rock was Christ. Anything founded on his beloved son, he's well pleased, guys. He's promised us that. We have everlasting life with the Son of God and with God. For we're all three in one. When you hear the Son, you hear the Father. When you're in the Son, you're in the Father. And you receive all the covenants that He promised our Father Abraham. By faith, through grace, it is the gift of God. Luke chapter 7. Jesus, or excuse me, chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, guys. Luke chapter 8, Jesus is talking about a seed, a seed that falls by the wayside and the devil snatches it up and a seed that falls on stony ground and it has no root for when it springs up, it, 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 the sun scorches it because it has no root, it has no depth. And then the seed that falls amongst thorns, the cares of this world and all the pleasures and lusts of this world, it just chokes that word out. But the seed that falls upon good ground it bears good fruit. And uh, as he says those things, I want to look at verse number 15 of chapter 8. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word. When you hear the word, your heart can be purged and cleansed just like Isaiah and just like Jeremiah. You know, Ezekiel also received the same thing. For God had put his words in his mouth and told him to eat that scroll. And he commanded him to go to the children of Israel, to a rebellious house, and speak all the words that he had put in his mouth. Three prophets. You call them major prophets. Those are major, and those are like Hosea and Joel and Amos. Those would be minor prophets. But it doesn't matter. In God's eyes, when you're his child, you're his child. Nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. When you receive that grace, look what he says here. Look what he says here. With an honest, and, verse 15, with an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it. Don't cast your pearl before swine. Keep the word of God. Those that abide in the word, abide in his commands. Those that are they have eternal life. Their names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If I tell you you can never stop sinning, then you're never going to stop sinning. Because you're going to believe that you can't stop sinning. No matter how righteous, especially when a righteous man. For no marvel that Satan disguises himself as a minister of righteousness. That's how he disguises, disguises himself. For his ministers are ministers of righteousness. They look holy. They look like sheep. But inwardly they're ravenous wolves. Because they tell you that he that is in you cannot overcome your sin all the days of your life. Jesus said to keep it. Keep the word. And they bring forth fruit with patience. So be patient. When the storm comes, God said he'll not tempt you more than what you're able to be tempted with. But with the temptation, he'll make a way of escape. He wants you to rely upon him. He wants you to be a good and faithful son to him good steward to him and to love his son. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Verse 16, No man, when he hath lighted a candle, covereth it with a vessel, or putteth it under a bed, but he setteth it on a candlestick. What did he tell? Isaiah said, Send me. Let my light shine before all men. Jeremiah, same ordeal. Go to the house of Israel. Ezekiel, Go. Let your light shine. Let them know how much I love them. Tell them to repent and to come back to me, to forsake all their idolship, to forsake covenants, to, to forsake harlotry and adultery, to forsake their sin, and I will cleanse them and purge them, and I will put a new heart in them. But tell them to keep it. For if they throw it, their great pearl of price, back to the swine, then I will turn from them. For if a righteous man turns from his iniquity, for if a, excuse me, guys, if a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, then none of his righteousness will be remembered. And he will be judged according to his iniquity. You know what the judgment, the penalty is if you have iniquity in your heart? It's death, eternal death. It still is, guys. God has not changed. 
For the wages of sin is death. But he's given us a free gift to keep, to keep it, to keep it. Depart from iniquity, it says in 2 Timothy. God will receive you as a son and daughter. Let your, can- let, let your light shine. Put it on the candlestick and let it shine before all that they can see the light. For nothing is secret that should not be made manifest. Neither anything hid that should not be known and come abroad. You can't hide anything from God. He knows your heart. If your heart has iniquity or sin in it, you must be purged and cleansed. It needs to have that hot coal placed upon your tongue. You need the Word of God to ingest into your heart, into your soul, into your mind, and into your heart. Don't listen to those false teachers that keep you living in the flesh. They keep you bound in the seed of Ishmael. But we are the seed of Isaac that worship God in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. That shall not be known to come abroad. Take heed, therefore, how you hear. Why does he say take heed? Because there's going to be wolves that come in sheep's clothing. They're going to try to keep you bound in the flesh. They're going to be workers for their father, the devil. John chapter 8, Jesus tells you. But then in chapter 10, he says, My sheep hear my voice, and they will not follow a stranger. Anybody that's preaching and not laying a sword to sin, doesn't love your soul. I don't care how many times they visit you in the hospital or how many times they visit you at your house or how many times they call you every day. If they're keeping your sin alive in your heart, they're not doing the will of God, but they're doing the will of their Father. If they loved you, they would get you to come to the knowledge of the truth. Not with condemnation. Seasoning it with grace, yes. But grace does not does not make a covenant with sin. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? If God forbids it, God forbids it. In other words, God's not going to shake the devil's hand. He's going to judge all of us according to the same way. If there's sin in our heart, we will be judged according to death. There will be no excuse or cloak for our sin. You're not going to have the excuse, well, I was taught this by my dad or my mom. Jesus said, lest you can hate your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, and even your own self, you cannot be my disciple. If they've taught you wrong, you must come out of that wrong. You must hear the word of God. Look what he says. Take heed how you hear. There's only one way you can hear. I'm just a vessel for Jesus Christ. That's it. Any pastor should be just a vessel for Christ. But if he's trying, if he's keeping your sin alive and telling you you can't stop sin, he's a liar and the truth is not in him. That's the spirit of error. And if you follow that man, you're going to fall into a ditch with that man. He's a brute beast full of sin and abominations, not being able to cease from his own sin so he keeps you bound in yours. Depart from those people for they will take your soul with them. They're workers for the devil. They're cursed children, Paul talks about in Galatians chapter 1. They're living in a dangerous state of mind. I pray that they come out of those things and depart from those things and preach the pure word of God. For blessed are the pure in heart, not the ones that have iniquity in their heart. For the pure in heart, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's his bride. A beloved bride, a chaste virgin. Hallelujah. Take heed how you hear. For whoever hath, to him shall be given. Now he's talking about the Spirit. You have, whoever hath, to him shall be given. Look at this. And whoever hath not, from him shall be taken, even that which he seemeth to have. Those sheep and wolf clothing seemeth to have the kingdom of God. It's going to be taken away from them. Because they would not receive the love of the truth that they could be saved. For they were preachers for iniquity and sin. Jesus said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. They don't take the word of God, which is the sword to the sin. For he did not come to bring peace, but he came to bring a sword. And you receive that sword, you're receiving that peace that surpasses all understanding. 
Let God be true and every man a liar, guys. Let us take heed how we hear, how we see. Let us understand that God means what he says when it comes to sin. But we can be clean. We can be washed. We can be pure in the precious blood of Christ. But let us keep it. Let us keep it. If you love him, you will be a doer or a keeper of his word. If you love the Lord thy God with all of your heart, might, soul, and strength, then don't listen to the world, don't listen to the devil, and don't listen to those angels of light, those ministers of righteousness, as Satan disguises himself as. For they will, they'll eat your soul up like cancer. Come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and he will receive you as sons and daughters. Send me. I cry. My, my prayer, my cry is that God will have more people say, send me, O God, that have been cleansed and that have been purged and that are keeping his word. Send me. That's a true revival. I love you guys. Continue to pray for one another, help one another, strengthen one another, pull each other out of the fire. Help them. For the book of Jude says, save some by those wholesome words of grace and save some through that fear of the Lord, pull, pulling them out of the fire. Guys, there's a day coming. It's approaching so fast. Let that coal land on your lips and let the word of God come into your mouth. Eat that scroll. Eat that roll like Ezekiel did. And go and do the will of the Father. For God is love. Build your foundation upon grace. But don't make the grace that you've received a harlot. Don't play the harlot. For God already knows. You can't hide it from Him. For we all must be born again that are in the body of Christ. One accord. One baptism. One Lord. One body. Made up of many members. There's a day coming, guys. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I get excited. The day is approaching quickly. Where the shaking's coming, and those that have built their foundation on another Christ, they're not going to stand. But those that have built their foundation on the wholesome words of Jesus Christ will live forever. I love you guys. God bless. In Jesus' name.